You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Ivan, kick us off. Hi, I'm Ivan Zak. I'm excited to introduce Chan Namgang. He's coming from the company Oncotect. Chang is a visionary entrepreneur and leader. Chan is the CEO and founder of Oncotech, pioneering the most accessible, convenient, and affordable cancer screening test for dogs. As the co-founder and advisor at HomeCloud, Chang brings innovation to residential property management technology. With a rich background as the former CEO and founder of Bevelo, and the former COO at Johnson Automotive, Chang has left an indeniable mark on the realms of fashion retail and automotive operations showcasting a dynamic journey through diverse industries chang welcome to the show thank you for finding the time what an entrepreneurial journey so you were executive in one two three companies yes well thanks for having me first of all um i have a very interesting background as an entrepreneur uh and in diverse industries and that's you know that's almost as a reason of uh, for for um, because I'm interested in finding solutions for different industries, and I as a coming in from fresh perspective, I believe that I can bring things that you know maybe insiders don't normally see, you know. And and I believe innovation happens when you synthesize different ideas from different industries. So um, and I, that's what I've done in in my previous businesses and startups. That's amazing because uh, I have a completely positive, uh, sorry, not positive, different experience with Sean. He's not from veterinary industry and see what he's doing, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's doing great and his product is amazing, Sean. I love you. Um, the uh, so You got to put more feeling in that because it wasn't actually believable and it's the holidays, <laughs> it's Christmas. Like, come on now. That's the best I can do. All right. Back okay, to well, thanks for trying at least. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully our producers can make that into more believable voice. So tell us, how did you end up in the veterinary industry? I mean, automotive, like it's, it's just, it's just very interesting. How do you end up and in a, what I assume is pretty difficult innovation. You're going to tell us all about it, but how do you end up in the veterinary domain? Yeah. Um, so by accident, really, my mom had breast cancer about six or seven years ago. Uh, she's cancer free now. Uh, but during that time, uh, you know, I had a chance to read a lot of cancer related journal articles and you know, research papers and and, you know, found out that there were while there are many solutions, cancer screening solutions in human medicine, you know, back in 2019, there wasn't any for uh, companion animals in veterinary medicine space. And and I really thought that that was really odd and kind of absurd, too, not knowing anything about you know, veterinary medicine or not as a scientist. Um, I still wanted to find a solution for it. And, and that's how I got into a veterinary science, veterinary medicine. Yeah, fascinating. So uh, very deeply personal story. Uh, I'm a little bit more interested in your background as an innovator and as an entrepreneur across other fields. So uh, let's talk about some of the problems you've solved before. And then let's talk about, you know, what's unique or novel about the way that you're trying to solve this problem in veterinary medicine. Sure. Um, well, in retail, uh, I started, so right out of college, I started my first business when I was 23, 23, 24. And it was uh, back then, um, I wanted to start a fashion company that was very um, affordable, but still contemporary. But also I wanted to start a company that's uh, really primarily focusing on e-commerce. And this is back in 2008, 2009, when e-commerce is still very nascent. Ended up opening, you know, up to 40 stores across the country in the United States. Also, you know, the a new business that I started with my co-founder, uh, HomeCloud, it's, uh, it's really one of kind digital inspection company where <clears throat> we gather home data in the cloud where, you know, you don't have to, let's say you, you know, a lot of homes are, you know, older homes and, you, you know, it's not, you, you're not the first owner of the house and many history of the home maintenance is lost. So we try to, you know, digitize up your home data uh, in the cloud. So, you know, they can pass it on to next uh, homeowners. And for this, you know, veterinary company, uh, Oncotact, I wanted to find a solution that was really easy, but also it can be not only done in the clinic, but at, at home as well. 
because you know during pandemic we've all we've all seen that you know the home testing market has totally exploded and people are more comfortable and you know and they're have become more really confident in collecting in specimen or doing you know testing at home and cancer is is there's a lot of stigma in cancer but at the same time cancer is the leading cause of death in dogs and many people have just terrible experience of losing a dog to cancer you know previously and they don't want to repeat that terrible experience and by you know getting ahead and being more proactive and preventative you can you know, get more time for effective treatments or or to get peace of mind that your dog is safe and healthy. Yeah, that's fascinating. So you had this deeply personal experience with your mother. Uh, you guys got on the other side of it. She's cancer free. And then you thought to yourself, I'm going to build a test for canines. And so tell yeah. us a little bit more about the journey. You know, so you had the sure. idea. You're not a scientist. So how'd you get here? Yeah, so you know, I found a research paper that where a group of scientists have discovered that these small little nematodes called C. elegans can detect can detect cancer in human medicine, and I thought that was just sounded too good to be true. Uh, but I wanted to find out if it was true, so I talked to a local veterinarian who uh, was very willing to help. So I got some urine samples, cancer and non-cancer. Found a bioscience company in in Oregon. That can run proof of concept and came back with some promising data. And at that point, you know, I had to make a decision whether this is something that I want to go all in or not. Right. And with my, you know, obviously lack of experience in science or in veterinary medicine, but they really didn't, um, you know, stop me or, you know, hold me back because I'm not afraid of, you know, learning new things and bring myself in to, um, you know, spending many hours reading and, and learning. And I believe that there's so much material on the internet that you can really, you know, learn anything if you put your mind to it. So at that point, you know, as a, you know, falsely optimistic and biased entrepreneur, I was like, oh, F it, I'm going to go all in. So that's how I started the business. Uh, and then then I hired and then recruited a PhD scientist who actually got his PhD from uh, by studying C. elegans in, uh, on microfluidics. And then we, you know, found a wet lab space uh, at NC State, and off we went. That's a pretty crazy story. Um, what is that? No, no, no. It's a totally crazy story. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what is the? What is your uh, background school wise? Did you? Oh uh, yeah, I got my undergrad of uh, uh, business degree from uh, Carolina University of North Carolina in Chapel. Hill. That's that's fascinating. You're and that, and I don't say that word as often as Sean does. So, <laughs> it's, but, but you've learned it from me. So it's, it's yeah, all good. about six times per episode. But <laughs> but uh, but that's amazing. I'm really really impressive that you have this background in very sort of general kind of business area, but then you apply it. Um, anyway, it's really really cool. Let's turn to the product itself and talk about what is it, how does this work, and how can people get their hands on it? Sure, absolutely. So this is a can early cancer screening test only for dogs right now, but we do have plans to develop a test for cats next year. This is a um, at-home cancer screening test. So it's not a point-of-care cancer screening. Like You actually have to collect you know, a small amount of urine, uh, one to two milliliter of urine at home at the clinic. Our test is available online, so it's a direct consumer, but also actually, but we do a lot more business with veterinarians. So we are not trying to circumvent, you know, veterinarian channel. We are tr we're actually working with a lot of veterinarians in veterinary hospitals um, because our goal at the end of the day is to bring, you know, patients, dogs back to the hospital, to clinics for additional services for, you know, for their consultation or for their diagnostic tests. We have hospitals uh, across the country, um, and we are adding a lot of hospitals every week now because our tests, our kit, uh, at-home testing kit, or the you know, is is really has made our process so much simpler and easier to collect urine. And also, our goal is to keep veterinarians uh, throughout the entire process, keeping veterinarians informed and involved throughout the whole process. So you know, we uh, once the report is ready, you know, we share with um, veterinarians as well as clients. Uh, sometimes when we do get you know moderate or high risk report, we actually um, take initiatives to call one of our vet techs. Will actually call the hospital first and give them a heads up uh, because we don't want to panic or traumatize you know clients 
you know, when they just get an email saying like, oh, your dog has moderate high risk of cancer. Uh, we don't want them to go down on a you know Google rabbit hole, so we want to make sure that we, can, we they have someone to talk to, but also we'll uh, recommend them to follow up with their own veterinarian for the consultation or diagnostic tests. Um, we pride ourselves as you know, like you mentioned, with the most convenient, accessible, and affordable cancer screening tests in the market, and we are the only one that I know of that you know, pet parents uh, can buy directly from online. So um, can you elaborate on the types of cancer? What is the sort of, you said that it's tested on urine. What, what are we looking for? Is it any cancer? Is there some oncomarkers that you find? Like, how does that work? Because most of our audience are veterinarians, so they're going to they're gonna really interrogate this episode quickly. Sure. So there's a consistent, like a cancerous metabolites that exists across cancer types. Uh, and we primarily focused on four most common uh, canine cancers, the lymphoma, melanoma, hemorrhagic sarcoma, and mast cell tumors. Uh, we do have plans to study other cancer types next year, such as TCC, uh, bladder, prostate, soft tissue sarcoma. I mean, we've tested those cancers before, um, but the reason that we are not you know, claiming that we can detect these you know, additional cancer types is because we haven't run a large enough sample types our sample size to um, to publish paper, but we do plans to do that next year. So my question is uh, maybe a silly one, um, but uh, I'm completely confused on how you collect a urine sample from a dog. So, and you said that your process is unique. So I, I was curious if you could kind of maybe elaborate on that. No, our process is not unique. Uh, our process is, our goal is to make, you know, collecting urine sample easier, right? So our kid has the tools that you need uh, as a as a pet owner, right? If you're trying to just collect urine without any like tools, it's it's difficult. But we provide like a pair of gloves, paper boats, like pipette, you know, preservative tubes that don't expire, uh, biohazard bag that can put the sample back in. Uh, every kit comes with prepaid return labels. So we made we made it easy for them to collect urine. And you know, we've you know we've sent hundreds of these tests out to actual pet pet owners and we maybe out of hundreds, we probably got two people email us that say like they're having a hard time collecting cool. urine. So it's actually um, not as difficult as people think it is. Um, and going back to explaining science, that really the easiest way to explain our science is, you know, you probably heard that dogs can detect human cancer in science. No. It, it was, you never heard that? Oh, it's, well, it's been proven, scientifically proven that dogs can detect cancer in human medicine. That's crazy. Um, and and the and the reason they can do that is because cancer cells produce very particular smell that's different from normal cells, and dogs can wow. tell the difference. Um, and and so we are using very similar science in that we are detecting these cancerous metabolites VOCs in dogs' urine, and we are quantifying the nematode's behavior, migraine behavior, to determine whether there's low, moderate, high risk of cancer. That, so you don't have dogs working in the company. <laughs> no, no. And the reason, and that's a good question. The reason that, although that's been scientifically proven that dogs can detect cancer in human medicine, the reason that it hasn't um, been commercialized is because it's a scalability. Like it's very expensive and you can get, you know, it's, first of all, it's very expen expensive to train dogs to do that task. And they're like humans too. They can only do so many. Uh, and you know, it's, unless you have um, a partnership not... with a puppy mill, then you can really, uh... <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> they can yeah, really we scale that. <laughs> that. It's just not a commercially scalable um, platform. Yeah. Uh, whereas we what we've developed is a commercially scalable platform where we can run many tests um, per day. So, so you've you've said you have aspirations to do the same thing for feline pets as well, which is super cool. Um, what's the vision for the company? Where where does this all end up in in a couple of years? Five, let's say five years. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, our goal is really to make this test available to as many companion animals as possible, with all cats, and the next, you know, the natural progression would be horses, like equine. In the next five years, you know, with these different, you know, product lines, you know, one for each companion animals. I, our goal is just really get the name out there and get the product awareness and education out, so people are, you know, like. At certain age, there's a lot of you know humanization happening in, in pet care space. And in in human medicine, at certain age, you know, we do cancer screening tests, not because we think that we're gonna have cancer, or just we don't want to put ourselves behind the eight ball. 
Like it's, it's meant to be preventative, meant to be proactive. Like just like my mom. I mean, she did a mammogram and they didn't find it actually at first. So they found it through x-rays of her kidney and they just found a small mass and they were able to find it early enough that they, should, they were able to remove it. She went through chemo and she's fine. Um, and just like, you know, by the time your dog has cancer now, it's already too late. You know, you can't do anything. But these cancers are actually treatable, you know, through a surgical removal or chemotherapy or medicine. Um, so our goal is to, you know, we have a one bucket of, you know, pet owners that um, want to have enough time for effective treatments. You have a second bucket of pet owners that just want to get peace of mind that their dog is healthy. And also you have a third bucket of pet owners that just want to know, and maybe they want they don't want to put their dogs through chemotherapy or any uh, any kind of cancer treatment, but they still want to provide better quality of life or or to provide palatable care. Um, so there's a there's a lot of use cases for our tests, and you know our again our goal is to you know get these tests in the hands of as many veterinarians and pet owners so we can reduce the death rate by cancer in in companion animals. It's very interesting. Um, I'm wondering who is your from like marketing and go to market strategy. Who's your target audience? You mentioned the three buckets of clients, but who are they? Like, is it someone who just has an older pet and you recommend doing it once a year or every half a year? Or is it someone who visited a vet and they have vague clinical signs and no answers on the blood work? And, and how do you market to them? Like, how do you actually go about marketing to the general public? Oh, um, we are not uh, really marketing to the general public right now. We're actually marketing uh, to only veterinarians. Okay. Because they are our greatest, you know, great partners, um, and you know, again, we are adding a lot of veterinarians, um, you know, maybe four or five veterinarians every week uh, across country. Our main target clients would be like people with senior dogs, right? You know, seven years and older, uh, as do as a annual screening test or high risk breeds, boxers, goldens, uh, Irish Wolfhounds, Mountain Bernies, that you know, and start those you know breeds at younger age, uh, five or six. Or, you know, any pet owners that just want to be more, you know, proactive in their pet's health. And then last bucket is people just, you know, they, so many people have lost their dog to cancer and it was just such a, you know, terrible experience. They don't want to repeat it. So they want to, you know, they want to get peace of mind and, you know, they, they want to have enough time to uh, either emotionally, mentally, or financially prepare for, you know, for, you know, inevitable. That's amazing. The whole conversation the way you start at the company, where you guys are at, where you're going, it's fascinating. And I mean, it's obvious. It's obviously a solution that the market wants and needs because you're not the first company that we spoke to that's doing this. So congratulations on all your success so far. Really interested to kind of follow and watch your progress. We ran out of time. We do every single week. Like we feel like there's, you know, 20 minutes of conversation at least left to have. But we like to wrap up every episode the same way. So we've got a couple questions before we're going to let you go. First is a book, YouTube video, TED Talk, something uh, that you found inspired you so far on your career path that you'd like to share with our audience. Oh, yeah. Recently, I read Elon Musk's autobiography. Uh, I know he's a controversial figure, uh, but you know, I, I was just kind of totally blown away. His intensity, tenacity, he just, his approach to finding a solution. And that was just really inspiring to me um, as we are trying to innovate. You know, he totally created a, you know, EV market and we are trying to create a, you know, a cancer screening market. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, similarities that I, that I learned and I was inspired by. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in that. He's, uh, he's definitely an interesting fella. And uh, I like that. Uh, I think it was Joe Rogan was talking to him about the amount of the ideas that he generates on a daily basis. And you know, how cool is this? And, and it was, it was awesome that he said, I don't know if you want to be in my head. It's, it's very, yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I, I loved on his episode, he's like, did you ever uh, design an airplane? He's like, yeah, 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 I did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the second question that we ask, is there an entrepreneur in our industry that you think would be good to invite to this podcast? Um, absolutely. Um, Dr. Matthew Glassman, He's a fellow uh, CEO founder of a company called Dr. Cuddles. Uh, it's a D2C pet care company. He's done some very innovative products for pet care. And recently he launched a uh, you know, product that really has never existed before. So he's uh, his good friend, um, very smart guy, surgeon you know, himself, been there, surgeon himself, 
also um, uh, just very good guy. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.